Today we are going to continue our journey through the Google XSS game. In the first video in this short series we covered level 1 and level 2 of the Google XSS game and we really went into how you can consistently find XSS issues. But today we are going to continue and we are going to be looking at levels 3 and 4 here but let's start with level 3. That sinking feeling. So level three starts off with this target here. We have Cloud Italy, which is a cloud data center where we can look at some things. So we have a couple of images. So we have image one, image two, and image three. So these three images, we can look at them and use them. So let's go over what we learned in the first episode and see if we can find anything. So first of all, we are going to be looking at our burp suite and see if uh, the reflector plugin that we installed in the last video found any reflected values on this page. And if I go into it here, we see that uh, no issues were found on our level three here, which is a bummer. So of course it, it didn't find any reflected values there. Secondly, we can also look at DOM Invader to see if this is a DOM based XSS. So for that, I'm going to go into my browser here, into Burp Suite, and we see that DOM Invader is on. Then we can go into our inspect element and under DOM Invader, we have a canary that we can use in places uh, to try and reflect that onto the page. But now, okay, where are we going to start using uh, this canary that we have, that value, to try to find DOM-based XSS. And it, it, on first sight, we don't really see any place on this page where we could input some data. I mean, we have image one, two, and three. That's all, right? Well, let's take a look at the URL. And when I switch these images, you can see that the hash part of the URL actually changes. And uh, that could be interesting, obviously, because if I, for example, change this to test and I go to the page, now we see that we get image, not a number, and uh, well, this image is broken, whereas image two, one, and three, they still work and they still give us something. Now, okay, that, that was with test. Let's try to use our canary here and see if any vulnerable functions are being used there and if we could use that for a DOM-based XSS. So I'm pasting the canary in here and let's go. And immediately we see that we have some sinks and some sources that were found here. Now for the sources, we have location.hash, which we knew uh, is going to be used because our hash, our location.hash is being used. So that's great. Uh, but the sinks are more interesting here. We have a jQuery.html and we have an element.innerHTML. So I'm just gonna go onto element.innerHTML and I'm gonna click on the stack trace, which is now gonna, gonna be pasted in my console. So now if I go to the console, we see that we have a stack trace here. Now we first of all see a bunch of an object here, something here, another object, HTML, diff element, object, all this weird stuff. Uh, and all of this lies outside of this application here. So for example, here you see that these are calls within the jQuery library and all that. But if we look at the second to last one, we can see that that one is called choose tab, which comes from uh, the frame here, the level three frame, so that code. So if I click on that, we will see that we get redirected here to the sources page where we have the source of our level three frame. And I'm gonna make this a bit bigger so that we can properly see it. So, okay, in the choose tab function, we are going to here use jQuery with .html. Now, what is this gonna do? Well, it's gonna uh, use jQuery to find an element uh, that has the ID tab content, and then it's going to set the HTML of that element to uh, HTML, which is a variable here that's created with, uh, that contains the text image plus a parse int of num, and num is an argument that is given to the choose tab function. Then we have a, a new line, and then we append to that an image tag with a source slash static slash level three slash cloud plus our number, plus dot JPEG. So that's great. So if we control this number here, then that would be vulnerable because then we could inject in here, we could inject anything and, and get an XSS going, right? And that's something that we need to find out. So uh, let's go back to our console because it said something else because choose step is obviously being called from somewhere and it's and this last one is where it's being called from, which is here uh, in our uh, window.at event listener. So if something happens, then we're gonna do a choose tab of unescape of self.location.hash. 
and self.location.hash is, well, our URL and the last part, the hash part of it. And then substring one is pretty much just going to remove that hash symbol in front of it. So we only have the value left. So, okay, that is how this code works. So we know that it should be vulnerable to an XSS here. Uh, let's go to the elements tab. And in here, we can actually see what is going on uh, in more detail. So I'm just gonna select this element here. So here we see our image. We see image not a number uh, because the parse int of this MNOM string is not a number. Then we have our new line and then we have our image which which says static level three clouds then our text dot JPEG. So okay, can we uh, get around that by for example uh, giving it a quote? Because obviously a quote will then, if we go back to the sources tab, a quote will here stop that source, so close the source opening per opening quote, so that way we, we, we have finished setting up our source. Our source will be static level 3 cloud, which, does, which doesn't exist, so that's great. Uh, we can already try that out by sending that and looking in the elements tab again. And in the elements tab, we see that that happened now, so our source is now this, which also doesn't exist, but now we have this weird .jpg here at the end, uh, which for now is fine. Now, obviously, we already, we already have an image tag that is erroring out. So what if we just add an on error attribute to that? So by setting on error to be alert one, what will happen? Well, if I send that, that kind of works, but not really, because now our, our on error is alert one dot JPEG, which is not valid JavaScript. So let's try uh, something so we can try uh, putting quotes around this. What does that do? Well, that does work because that breaks up uh, this element or breaks up this attribute so that the dot .jpg string isn't part of the value for the on error attribute anymore. And that works. We have executed an alert and we have solved this first challenge. And what did we do? Well, we used DOM invader to find a DOM XSS and that way we just traced it down and we solved it using a methodology that we could use on other assets as well. So we just traced the code, uh, found out what was going on and we know now exactly what is happening here and why this XSS works. Now it's time to move on to level four to see what that has to offer for us. Time for level four, context matters. In this level, we get a timer and we can, well, time stuff. So for example, here we can create a timer for one second. And if I create a timer then we see that that works and we get time is up after one second. Now, okay, that is a timer, but we want to find an issue in this. Uh, let's first of all, check for a reflected excess by, for example, typing in test here, creating a timer with test and then looking at our burp reflector plugin to see if it gave us any uh, finds, if it found a reflected value in there. So let's do that. And immediately here we see our level four frame uh, timer equals test. And we see that XSS is possible because the timer value was reflected twice in the, uh, in the body. And we can look at the request here and then the response. And in the response, we see here that test and test were found two times in this response. The first time it was found here in this, your timer will execute in amount seconds and the second time in this image in the on load. So, okay, we have a reflected value. Let's try to get an XSS in this div here by obviously sending some XSS through. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with uh, a, um, a script tag with an alert one and then close the script tag. If I create a timer, we see that that does not quite work. Uh, so we didn't get an XSS here. Now let's actually quickly look at that request. So in the proxy, I'm gonna go to my HTTP history and here we have that request. And there we can see that it changed the less than and greater than signs or symbols to their HTML entities. So that's ampersand LT and then a semicolon. And that is a pretty good uh, protection against XSS. That means that we cannot insert any new elements there. And that is a pretty good protection against XSS because we cannot create any new HTML elements that way. So that is a bummer to us. But one thing we should notice is that there is a second place where our value is being reflected and that is in an element. So that's already in an element and there things are obviously possible because in this case, we don't need to create a full new element because already in the onload of this image element, 
we're already running some code that has uh, what we need in there. So what does it seem like? Well, we're injecting into here. So all we would really need to do is supply a quote, close this start timer, and then just run an alert, right? So let's try that out. I'm gonna close the quote, close that. So now the timer is closed. Let's also put a semicolon um, just for, for a good sake. And then we're gonna run our alert one. Uh, now, obviously uh, we are here, it's closing it with another quote and uh, closing parenthesis. So let's just quote this as well so that it becomes proper JavaScript. And now if we create that timer, we see that that works. And if we go and look into that request, um, you can see that our timer here, it, it worked out because this sign becomes a quote uh, in this case as well. And it runs that as JavaScript. And we have succeeded in level four as well. And this was again, a reflected XSS, but we noticed that a very common protection was in place. The protection that was in place is that you cannot create new HTML uh, elements. So in this case, we had to find a reflected place where it was not in need of creating a new element. It was already in an attribute that is being executed. And that way we could escape out of the start timer string that it had and run our alert and solve this lab. And that was all for today's video. Now today we learned a bit more about XSS. We, we really covered our bases. We went and looked at a DOM XSS once again, we reversed some code to figure out how all of that worked. And then now just in this last challenge, we looked at a reflected XSS where there is some sanitization going on where things are not working the way we would want it. But because the context here allowed us to do something specific, we were able to still get an XSS. And this last one is really important because that's a protection that you will find almost everywhere. So you really need to go look for that context where things are allowed. But for now, that is all. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, leave a like, leave a comment with some feedback, and I would hope and love to see you back in the next video. Take care, guys.